So do you find yourself asking, how do I make my app do things in Thunkable? Well, today I'm gonna to show you the basics of just that. I'm gonna show you how to use blocks. We'll cover component blocks. We'll cover nine component blocks, which I also call support blocks. And then I'm going to give you a practical example of how all of these things work together to do something awesome in an app. Well, hey there friend, Darren here from Thunkable X Tutorials. And you know, I love providing resources to you to show you how you can make your own apps with Thunkable. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the basics of blocking your app so that by the end of the video, you will be ready to start blocking your own app. All right, so in the last tutorial, we added a button and a label to a new app. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and watch the last video. But today we're going to be looking at blocks and we can do this by looking at the blocks tab. Now at the top here, we have uh, some groups of blocks, but we actually wanna look at the bottom ones for now. The ones at the bottom, those are our component blocks. And so these are the things that we are adding onto the screen and then inside of these buckets, this is where we can find blocks specific to those components. So component blocks change the properties of your components whenever you interact with those components. So as you're interacting with components, you use component blocks to change those properties of the components and do other things in your app. Each component has unique blocks and each one does different things. So looking at the home button, we have a win home button click block and this is one of the more popular ones. However, looking at the counter label block, we can see there's a, a few different ones here. They're all kind of similar though, but the top one from counter label set text to blocks. This will change the text on the counter label. We'll look at this one in a little bit. And down below, there are a few others uh, that we won't get into in this tutorial. So the other hierarchy of apps are the ones that are not tied to any specific component, the non-component blocks, or what I'm calling for this video, the support blocks. Now there are quite a few buckets here. We're not gonna go into detail on a lot of them, but if you want to read the documentation or learn more about specific ones, feel free to leave me a comment below or check out the docs that I have linked in the description. So these non-component blocks support your components and are not tied to any single component. So what that means is that these buckets of blocks are always here and that they are not specific to any other block. They help interact with other blocks and help do the logic in your app. So some of the most popular ones are, let's look at the, con the control bucket. So the if do block. The if do block is what is called a con conditional statement. And what it's going to do is to check to see if something is true and then if that thing, whatever it may be, is true, it will do something. So say it is looking for, is my name Darren? Well, yes, my name is Darren. So then it's going to do whatever's inside of that block. Or is age greater than 10? Well, yes, age is greater than 10. Or no, it's not. It's a conditional statement, the if, do, block. Another popular block is the navigate to block. So this will navigate to another screen whenever you want it to. So you can choose the drop down to select which screen you want to go to, and then you can go to that screen. And uh, you may have saw before, to get rid of blocks, you just drag and drop them to the trash can. Uh, another popular one that we will use later is the logic blocks. This compares things. So is something equal to or is something greater than or equal to. You can choose the operator you want to use. So this one is very powerful and needed a lot of times when using a conditional statement that if do block we talked about before. And then finally, what we definitely want to talk about are variables. Variables are the keys to coding. A variable is basically a bucket that you can store something in. You can change that 
and you can use it to do powerful things in your app. So essentially with variables, what you want to do is to initialize them. So that's how you create a variable. You create a bucket, you can call it name or age or counter, and then you can change a variable and you do that with the set and change blocks. So now let's take a look at a demonstration of all of these blocks. What we want to do, or what I'm going to do, is every time I click the button, it's going to update the label to a number. So effectively, I'm going to be creating a counter that will count up one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to put a cap on that number. So I'm gonna say, if the number is equal to five, stop updating the label. Let's take a look at this. So the first thing I wanna do is create a variable that will be our counter. It will store the number that we're counting. So we will make it start at zero and then we will count up from there. So I'll go to math and drag in a number zero. Now, how are we going to update this counter? Well, we're gonna do that with the button. So I'll go to the home button bucket and then pull out the home button click block. And then within this click block, the first thing I'm going to do, or I want to do, is to change the counter. And so I'm going to use change instead of set. What change does is it increments a number. So I can increment it by one or negative one or by five. For this, I'm creating a counter, so I will increment it by one. So every time I click the button, now it's going to increase counter by one. Now this increase is only happening in the background. What I, what I wanna do is show the increments to the user on the screen. So for this, I need to go to the counter label bucket. This is our label. And from there, I can actually update the text of that label. So I will use the from label set text to block, and then I'll put counter inside of that. So it will update the text of label to whatever is in my counter each time I click the button. So let's take a look at this. I'm inside of my Thunkable Live app to test this. And every time I click the button, it increases and updates the label one by one. So it's doing exactly what we told it to do. So I wanted to show you how the conditional block works, the if do block. So we wanted to increase the label or update the label until it reached five and then stopped updating it. So we'll go to the control bucket and pull out the if do block. And then we want to update the counter until it is at five. So if it's greater than five, we will stop updating it. So from the logic bucket, we'll pull out the is equal to block, and then we'll grab our counter, which is that variable that tells us how high the counter is. And we want to check to see if this is less than or equal to five. So we'll grab the number block. And so yeah, now we have a check that checks to see if the counter is less than or equal to five. If it is, then we will update the text label. If it's not, we will not do that. So now let's take a look again. I hit the button button and it increases the label until it reaches five. And now that it has reached five, I can click button as many times as I want, and it does not change the label. So we have covered a lot in this video so far. We've talked about component blocks and support blocks, and now I've given you a practical example. But to take it one step further, I wanted to tell you about two things. So the first is Thunkable's own tutorials. So if you go over to the left, you can see this little pull out box where you can go through step by step, simple tutorials to make more apps. And the last thing is that I really want to encourage you to play around with these. Thunkable is meant to be easy and meant to be readable. And one thing that I can encourage you with is things that don't go together, they won't go together. You can see I'm trying to drag things into each other that really don't work. But if I grab things that will pop into place, will thunk into place, they do pop in place. And you can see that there. So play around and try new things because it is made to be easy for you. So the bottom line for today's video is that blocks are the building blocks of your app, pun intended. Let me know in the description below, is there a block you don't understand and want to learn more about? I would love to converse about that or even make a video explaining that block. 